Out of all the things I've come up with over the years, the one statement that seems to resonate with everybody is don't be a salesy weirdo. Now, let me grab that for you. There we go. So this statement is something that everybody understands. Whether you've been in sales a long time or not, you know when you've encountered a salesy weirdo. Let me tell you a little bit about the types of salesy weirdos that you might have run into. There's three kinds of salesy weirdos that you're probably going to hear about. One is that overly enthusiastic or overly energized one that's always in your face, big lion roar and just saying, how are you today? And they get right up there and they feel like this is the character they need to put on. There's the overly formal one that's a little bit more robotic, wanting to say all the things right. And then there's the really sneaky one that you know that there's an agenda and you can smell that sales breath coming off of them. All of these salesy weirdos are often why you might resist wanting to be a salesy weirdo yourself and maybe resist the act of selling. Because see the thing, sales is not some kind of magical art form or some character that you put on. Selling is all about just helping people buy from you. So if you can think about, you know, selling is a heroic act. You can be a sales hero in what you're doing, not because of who you're trying to be, but how you help your customers win. So I really want you to think in terms of what does a buyer want from you? Think like a buyer as you're going through this program and think about how you're going to help lift those buyers up and what it would feel like to be on the other end of your sales efforts. One of the questions I get asked quite often is what if I'm not extroverted like I'm supposed to be in sales? The reality is that a, a lot of times uh, somebody like me who's a, a natural extrovert has a harder time selling because I don't have the ability to be quiet and listen. An introvert is a natural listener and has a lot more empathy skills than often a lot of the extroverts because they're not trying to hear themselves talk. They're actually trying to you know, absorb and, and, and empathize with their audience. And so it doesn't matter what your personality type is, what your background is, who you are, it matters who you want to be when you're selling. I want you to think of selling more so as an act of leadership rather than an act of sales. Because when you're selling, you're really trying to lead people through to a decision. You're trying to help them make sense and take action on something. And you need to be an effective leader to be able to do that. See, in selling, there's a number of topics that we cover often is we talk about change. We talk about psychology. We talk about influence. We talk about systems and process. But one of the biggest things is that in selling, you are really a leader. It takes a very specific skill set, a very specific mindset to go out and sell effectively. So I'm gonna give you five things that you should be thinking about on who you need to be as you're selling. One, you need to be present. You need to be making eye contact, whether you're face to face with them or virtually through your email and your videos, you need to be absolutely connected to your audience too. You need to be crazy curious about what's happening in their world. That's why we focus so much of our attention on questions and empathy skills, because if you can really put yourself in the shoes of your customers before you interact with them, they're going to feel like you get it. And if you can get them to think differently about themselves, they'll think differently about you. Three, you need to be generous. Now I'm not talking at the expense of your sales. I'm talking about, think about the value that you can offer your clients right away before you ask for anything. Now this could be the insights that you provide, resources that you give, but something that shows them that you can help them make a decision. Four, you need to be willing to challenge your customers. Don't just let them go through the status quo. Help them see things they might not see because if you can get them to cognitively reframe their world, they're gonna be much more willing to take action. And one of the things I talk about often is you're listening for them to go, hmm, whether that's in your email or on a phone call. If you can get your customer to go, hmm, 
then you've done your job in challenging them. Number five, the last one is probably the most important one. You need to just be interesting. You need to be somebody that's chaseable, that's fun, that they want to connect with because they want to learn more. Even if you have the best offer in the world, if they don't feel like you're the right person to help them, the likelihood of them wanting to talk to you goes down dramatically. Okay, the question for this one is, who do you want to be when you're selling to your customers? What, what's your best version of yourself? Write that down. Hey, this is Joe Girard with Change, Grow, Achieve. Thanks for checking this out. Remember to subscribe and check out some of the other videos and resources we have. You know, as a sales coach, I spend a lot of my time just helping people be less weird and more human with their customers. If we can help you and your high-performing team, reach out to us, let us know, and let's connect soon.